Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Today is Crafting Life Catch Up. Be warned, there is a bit of knitting and a bit of crochet, but we should have some fun. I've got some finished objects to show you that might inspire you to make something, and I've also got an acquisition, which I shouldn't have bought, but I couldn't resist. So, let's get started. I'll start with the one crocheted item because there is only one. So Bod had a palooza. This week's was a great beanie. It was called, and I have to look it up, Nodding Around Beanie. And it was doubly great because it was in a three weight, an eight ply, which I have a lot of. Now Crystal did it in a glittery type yarn. So I thought, oh, I know what I'll use. So I went to my yarn stash because I knew I had one ball of this. I probably bought it about four or five years ago in the Helsinki. Now the label is on either Norwegian or Finnish because Reeves did some translation for me and he said it's in a bit of both and he doesn't understand why. So it is Karatopu yarn, this one. I made it in this. There are 100 gram ball, 320 meters in the ball. It's just a color number and I used a four millimeter crochet hook to make the knotting around beanie. And here's my beanie. Ta -da! I used four millimeter, which is a yarn recommendation. I also wanted a teen come tween size beanie, not a huge adult size. And this turned out perfect. Look at the back. Isn't that beautiful? That yarn came up really nice. It is so soft, absolutely. Now, I used 69 grams, so I have a little bit left. Now, I bought one ball of this in this colour, which is like a very orangey coral colour, and one ball in hot pink, which I've used some of. I don't know why I bought one ball. I found them in a railway station, underground railway station in Helsinki in a little craft shop. But they are really nice. So that is my one crocheted product, finished project I guess you call it. It's lovely and soft. Oh. And it looks lovely. And it's for Bod Hadapalooza being hosted by Laura at Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. Hopefully I'll have some pictures for you at the end. But do you like that colour? I do. I think a teenager or a tween will really like that. So that is my one and only crocheted finished object. So, knitting. Hmm. I have been knitting. So last year when we went to the UK, I made thing, I just have to move some things, a dicky and a beanie. And he wore them a lot because he does get quite cold around here and his head. And um, in the end, when we left, he had to lighten his luggage. So we took out the beanie, the dicky, poncho, washed them all and gave them to charity. And talking to him on WhatsApp the other night, he said, I'm going to need another dicky and a beanie for when you come over because it will be quite cool if you want to make me one. So this is the dicky pattern he likes, except... He wanted it a bit longer in the front and a bit broader in the shoulders, which I have done. So now, my dickie is on Ethel, a female model. I don't have a male one. Here it is. Ta-da! I've made him one. So I have made it longer in the shoulders like he wanted. Because even though he's quite short, he's quite broad-shouldered. And he asked for it to be about an inch longer in the front and back. Because it was actually quite short. But this will be good, I think. And it is lovely and soft. I used the yarn that was... I had two balls gifted to me. Two of Wands Colour Theory by Lion Brand. In the colour um, Stonewash. So I made that and had some left over. And last week Spotlight had it on sale. I think it was like 30 or 40 percent off so I went and bought another ball and made a matching beanie and I used the pattern two by two by Anna G now these patterns are available on Ravelry Ravelry 
all patterns, tutorials, anything I think you need to have a link to will be in the description below if you want to check them out. But I made him this fold-up brim beanie. The only thing I'm not happy about at the moment is that bit. But I'm hoping once I block it, and it's not a very good shape head. These foam heads are quite small. Um, although he does thing does have a pin head, very small head. But yes, I thought this would be handy because he can roll up the brim if it's a little big and pull it down however he wants. But I've made him a matching beanie in the same yarn and made it two by two ribbed to match the collar of the dicky. So they're the two things I've made to take with me for thing when I go to the UK to help keep him warm. Now in total I used 230 grams of yarn and I'm thinking now because I have this yarn left over if it's still on special maybe I should buy another ball and make him some fingerless gloves. What do you think? Should I make him some matching fingerless gloves to go with his beanie and his dicky? The colour's great. It Before he left when we talked about it he's got a like a polar fleece jacket that's red with this color sort of like strips on it and it matched great so i think that'll be a nice outfit when he puts it on and it'll keep him warm but let me know you reckon i should make him some fingerless gloves i don't know he's got really bad arthritis in his hands he does wear gloves but sometimes he always says to me oh, i wish they were fingerless anyway the next thing I have knitted is because of the Karatopu one skein and I do have a few one skeins in my stash because I'm very naughty for buying one skein. I should just buy enough like for a project. Say so this is the amount I need for this project. This is what I'll buy. Shopping in London at John Lewis, I found a yarn. I thought that would be really nice to try. And I bought one skein from last year. So it is Stylecraft Life DK, this one. Actually, it wasn't in London. I bought this in Wick in Scotland from a lady, Wendy's craft shop. She only had the one. That's why I bought one. I just remembered. But I did like it. It has this fleck in it that sometimes when you're knitting falls off it is 75% premium acrylic 25% wool 3% viscose so I can't donate this one to charity because it's got wool in it but I went to my what would you call it my my favorite predictable basic slouch hat the one that I always make and I think of the world, but I can't get it today. <laughs> so it's a, it's a man's pattern from Canada. I think it's a blue brick company, but I have changed it quite a bit and adapted it to suit me. So here's my slouch beanie that I have made in that yarn. Now it does have a wide brim. This is a very small head. It is probably ideal. I um, actually sell a lot of these on my in my Etsy shop. When I put them up, they usually go straight away. But, um, yeah. Look, can you see the flex? They're just hanging there. They could easily come off. And they did when I was knitting. So for this, I used a 4mm knitting needle because I wanted it quite tight and compact because it's probably the go-to size knitting needle for the yarns I make for the slouchy look it is soft but there is a little bit of prickliness to it and uh, for this I'm trying to think if I can see what I use to do to do I can tell you what I write on my label what's left there are 34 grams left from a hundred gram ball so the slouch does take a bit but it is my go-to pattern for a slouch beanie I do like it. It's easy knit when I'm watching television. A bit mindless, you know, knitting away. Just got to remember to keep my row count right. But that is why I have started to use some of my one skeins. And the scraps left over always come in handy when I'm looking for something to make. So that is the knitting over and done with. But my acquisition. So 
going through my one skeins, I found this particular colour yarn. It is Peyton's Pantanile Artistry 4 ply or fingering weight, 80% merino wool, 20% nylon. It's a 100 gram hank and there are 375 metres. Now I've been thinking of making myself a certain set and I really wanted to use this yarn, which is enough for one item. But I thought, well, I'll shop around and see if I can get more. When I first saw this, I saw it in a shop in Melbourne for $26 a hank. I thought, mm, that's a bit exy. And then as we drove around Victoria in a small country town, they had a craft shop and she had it for $19.50 and that's when I bought it. But I also bought one in this colour. This is purple mix. This is sunrise mix. They're the two colours and I have one of each. So I got online and started shopping around and sure enough, it's still $26 at the Melbourne shop. But I found a shop and it is called, and I have shopped there before, I'd forgotten about them, the Yarn Shop, the Yarn Store, Darling Downs. I'll put a link to their website. They're in Brookside Centre, Queensland. And they had this yarn for $16.50 a hank. No, it wasn't on sale. That's what they had. So in my parcel of acquisitions, I bought two in that colour and two in that colour. So I have three now in each colour and I'm going to make a set with either one colour or both colours. Make two sets. Who knows? But I thought that was just... I don't understand how one shop can sell it for $26 and one shop can sell it for $16.50. You know, what is the true cost of yarn? So there you go. That's what I bought from them, but I didn't stop there because, of course, I'm going to look at their other yarn. And they had Peyton's um, Cotton Blend, which is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. And it's about $7.95 a ball here, and they had it for like just over $5. And I wanted some greens to make an avocado pin cushion for Reeves's friend, and I bought those too. Now... I also bought some red, which I don't mind. And of course I'm going to buy orange. And then I bought this, which is actually gray, which should have been brown. So I think I've messed up. The only thing I would say is some of the colors are disappointing. And it's always to do with the laptop and how they reproduce. Nothing to do with the shop. I thought this orange would be a lot brighter. It did look brighter online. The red is not too bad and the greens are a little dull. I don't know if I'll make the avocado out of this now or not. But the cotton blend, the 50-50, comes in real handy when I want to make some little hamagurumis. So yes, my parcel from the yarn store Darling Downs. There was no invoice or note, but they generally invoice you. Look, the freight was really good. I have to be honest, the postage was excellent for what I ordered. And um, I would order from them again. So if you're in Australia, I don't know if they do international, check them out. Their prices are good. They do stock a lot of Peyton's yarn and Fiddlesticks yarn. I'm trying to think of um, hair heirloom yarn. But yeah, I have got, I think I'll probably start with this colour. Because when I think about it, because it's winter items I'm going to make, it will match my coat. There you go. Now I have to add that to my July yarn stash down as a purchase. I've got to add up all the grams. So I better get moving in July and make a lot of stuff to balance out my purchase. I don't want to finish in the red. Anyway, ladies, that is what I have made. And I really have enjoyed this week crafting and watching some videos and being inspired. I went to Crochet for Cancer, donated two lap gowns, four beanies. Had a pretty good week. So let's hope this week 
will be better. Can't get much better than having a good week, really. But my goals for this week are to try and finish another item for the UK that I have on the go that I really want to take with me. I also want to try out some of the blanket and plushy yarns and velvet yarns that I have in my yarn stock and use some of them up. I have never really used them before and I thought I might do a, a range of items and see what I think of them and use them up. I might do that. I know a lot of people make plushy amigurumis and say they whip up really quick and they're good sellers, but I don't know. My goals are limited to how many chores I've got to do while things away. But I hope you've had a great week and you join me for the next video, which could be a view of my blanket and plushy yarns. Okay, take care, stay safe, and remember, have one crafty day this week. Bye for now.